Hi guys and welcome back. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to fit these or primarily I'm going to be showing you how to do the recesses for these in the worktops. Now if you've seen my other video on how to join square edge worktops I didn't actually show you in that so this is going to be a follow on from that video and it's also going to be a follow on from the one that's coming out next week I know follow on but whatever um, of how to do mason's mitres on worktops as well so this is going to be covering two different videos so you might say in there well, why haven't you shown how to do the whole joint? It's going to be covering two other videos as well. So I'll link to them at the end of the video so you can see them. But let's jump in, stop waffling, let's get on with this and show you how to fit these. Okay, so the things that you're going to need to do this is you're going to need a, a half inch router cutter. They come in two different lengths. I'll put the sizes down here because I can't remember off the top of my head. This is the shorter one. It's not really long enough, but it'll do for today. You're gonna need a half inch router to do this. Um, the best one you can possibly afford, to be honest, but if you can only get a cheap one, you can only get a cheap one, but a quarter inch router is not gonna be man enough to do this, and the cutters won't be long enough to do this. So you're gonna need a half inch router. Uh, this is a trend one. They're not too bad. These are about 200 pounds, somewhere around there. Uh, but you can get cheaper routers, cheaper half inch routers. You're gonna need a 30 mil guide bush fitted into your half inch router. And that's to copy along here, but we'll go into more detail about that later on. And then you're gonna need a worktop jig for yourself as well. Um, or at least, you know, a worktop jig or a bolt hole jig at least, if you're doing a square edge worktop than just a bolt hole jig. This one's only got two bolt holes in, most of them have three bolt holes in. I'm not sure why this one only has two in it, but it's the one that I've got, I like it. Um, relatively inexpensive, inexpensive, it was about 30, 40 pounds, somewhere around there, unique one, it's a good brand, made in the UK, so that's always good. Um, but yeah, they're the things that you're gonna need. I'm gonna bring you in closer now and show you about the jig itself and then we can uh, actually turn our attention to doing some work top. Let's do it. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is familiarize ourselves with our jig. Now, your jig might be different to mine. Yours might have a third bolt hole section in here. Um, this is just the one that I've got. Some have three, some have two. Doesn't really bother me because I like to move my jig along anyway, but we'll get to that a little bit further down the road. So we've got these things here that are called pegs. These go into the holes, as you can see here. They're quite a tight fit, you want them tight to go in. For the purpose of this video, what we want to look at on our jig is this one here that says B on it, B for bolts. That's what we want to look at on our jig when we do this and our pegs go into there and they sit down into a little recess so they sit nice and flush. Okay, so something we need to determine before we start doing anything is where we actually want to put our bolt holes. Now, with the jigs with the three holes in, it's tempting just to put the jig straight on and route the three holes in place. Now, I don't like to do that. That's why it doesn't bother me that my jig's got two holes in it rather than three bolt holes. Because what I like to do is actually be able to position my bolt holes where I want them rather than where they're determined. And it's simply because you don't want to fall like onto this back panel or you don't want to fall into where there's obstructions in the way. So I like to go through and measure out where I'm going to put one. So I'm going to put a bolt hole about 100 mil in, if you can see that. Let me move the camera for you. So you should be able to see that from there. So if I put one at 100 mil, that's going to clear that back panel by about 30 mil. So that means that when we come to do our bolt hole up, there's nothing in the way. So we can do one in the center at about 300 mil. That's fine, obviously there's no obstructions. And I'm gonna do one at 500 mil. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because you can see these two screws here and here, if you can see. Yeah, you've got these two screws here and here. If I put that at 500 mil, it's just gonna clear them. So I'm gonna to have to put a little hole into, the, into this bracing piece here, rather than doing it on the front edge and breaking through this front edge or something. So. That's what I normally tend to do over the years. I've normally found that 100, 300, 500 normally gives me a decent amount of spacing. Obviously check that for the one you're doing to make sure that's gonna work for you. But yeah, general rule of thumb, we're gonna do that. So I can now take this bit of worktop outside, do our mason's mitre and then do that. Now I am gonna be doing a video on how to do the mason's mitre 
and there's also already a video on the ch channel of how to square uh, how to join square edge worktop so if you haven't seen that yet it'll, i'll link it up in this top corner here and down in the description for you now they might not be out at the time of me doing this video but they will be there so check back maybe next week or something like that if they're not there yet they will be there shortly like i said there'll be a link here to how to join a mason's mitre worktop and down in the description and there is already a video on the channel about how to join square edge worktop so you can check both of those out and they should uh, help you out there okay so we're now going to do our bolt holes now you can see i'm inside i wouldn't advise doing this inside but it's raining outside so we've kind of got no choice um this does make a lot of mess don't do it inside if you can get away with it um go outside but like i said we've got no choice in this matter so we've got to do it but yeah just bear in mind it's going to be really messy so what we want to do first is get our jig set up so what we want to do is put our two pegs into the bolt holes now on mine they're marked by b um they should be something similar on yours marked out so yeah two pegs in you shouldn't have to hammer these in but these aren't the right pegs for this one so i have to use a hammer to get mine in. Like I said, you want them tight in there. You just don't want them that tight, but I've had this jig for a long, long time and yeah, I've lost loads of bolts. Okay, so that's them in. So that's our jig set up. That's all we need to do for bolt holes to set up is two pegs in there. So we'll move that out of the way for a second. Now we want to mark out where we actually want to put our bolts. Um, first of all, we're going to take this fuzzy edge off from the router. just do that with me back on my square or a knife or anything right so we're going to mark out for our bolts now if you remember when we measured up on the carcass we wanted 100 300 and 500 so we're going to mark them out now it's important to remember that this measurement is going to be the center of this hole not the edge it's going to be the center now you probably can't see on there Maybe you can. I've got a little centre mark that I've marked into mine. Um, just to help you with doing this. I'd advise you do the same. So we're just going to square these lines back. Like so. Now normally I'd use pencil, but I'm doing this in a Sharpie for you guys so you can see what I'm doing. We're going to bring our jig over and we're going to line it up with the little centre mark, like I said, that I've put in the back there. If you haven't got a centre mark, you can always measure to the centre just to make sure, you know, you can get your tape measure in there and just sort of measure to make sure you're in the middle. But you want to be in the middle of there. You don't want to be offset like that because then when you do it on the other side, you might set to the other side and then you'll be out. So line up to your middle and then we want some decent clamps on there to hold this down now bearing in mind the size of your router base you don't want to put these clamps in the way as you're routing and bashing into them um, i would recommend using some decent clamps for this or if you haven't got decent clamps like these are quite expensive if you haven't got decent ones just put multiple clamps on there because you don't want this jig slipping whilst you're doing this so put as many as you can on and then that's the jig set we don't need to touch the jig now until we've done that hole we obviously need to move it for our next holes but we'll come to that in a moment okay so the next thing we need to set is the depth of our router now we do that with these pillars here and this little adjustable gauge it might be different on yours but they're generally similar so i'm going to move that round and then we can set this at zero like that so now that's zeroed off so we know that this distance here whatever this is is the depth that we're going to plunge now this is a 38 mil worktop i don't want to go right away through this worktop excuse me i don't want to go right away through the worktop we want to go about three quarters somewhere around there we don't want to be too shallow because it, we're not going to get a proper bite on it but we don't want to go too far because we don't want to weaken the face on this so yeah about anywhere from half to three quarters <coughs> is about right so i'm going to go about 20 mil so there you go that is now set to 20 mil so when i plunge this down 
it will likely go down 20 mil in there. If you're not confident doing it this way, I'll show you another way now quickly. Okay, so it's now time to do the router in itself. Now the things that we want to bear in mind here is we don't want to take off too much in one go. Basically, we don't want to loosen this router cutter and plunge through. And if you try and take this all out in one go, that is going to put a lot of strain on that router cutter and start to pull it down. It doesn't matter how tight you've got this collet, it will do that. So we're going to maybe do this in three passes just to make sure that we're not putting too much strain on the router. By this point, once you've done all these joints and all that, that cutter's not going to be as sharp as it was when you started. So you can put a new cutter in, but I'd suggest just take some short bites. Maybe do that in three passes, just so you're not overworking the router itself. Let's do it. And there you have it, guys. That is your bolt hole routed. And make sure you give that a good clean out before you're underneath it because otherwise you get all that dust in your eyes. Right, so it's time to move to our next bolt hole. Like I said, if you've got the one with the three in there, you might get away with not having to move this jig at all. You might be able to do all three, but I like to just make sure that I do it. Now, the important thing to remember is when you put this clamp on, you don't want to go over the bolt hole that you've just done because that's going to be a weakened point and you're going to put all the pressure of that clamp onto that bolt hole. So just try and clamp on a solid bit of worktop rather than that. You might have to put your clamps in this orientation as I've got to do here because I've got nothing on this end to go to. But yeah, that's it. I'll get these done. I'll come back to you. Okay, and there we go. That is our three bolt holes routed, and you can see from our marks, we're in the middle on all of those. So I'm gonna do the same on the next piece of worktop, and then I'm gonna bring you in and show you how to actually do these bolts up from inside the cupboard. Okay, so as you just saw, I just tried the worktop in. I'm happy with it. I marked it to length and I cut that to length. So we're happy that this is going to fit. Um, but what we need to do now is put a hole over here so we can do that bolt up from the inside, like I was saying to you earlier. And the advantage of, I don't know if I, you can see, see that little pile of dust there? That's why when we tried that bit of worktop on, the hole from that, the dust from that worktop bolt drops down. So we know where that bolt hole is. So a nice big hole saw here, and we'll just drill that out. And there we have it. Now we can do our bolt hole up. So it's time to do these up. I'm not gonna show you the whole process because like I said, on the video where I show you how to do these masons miters, I will show you how to do the worktop up there. But yet again, up here and in the description for that, but I will show you how to do these bolts up here. So stick around, we're gonna be inside the cupboard in the next shot, showing you how to do them bolt holes. Okay, a little tip with these bolts for you guys before we jump under there. When you're trying to get these in, they can flop around and go all over the place. So what I do is I push it up to make sure it engages in the little hole. And I'll get a bit of tape, a bit of tape, and we just wrap that round. And what that will do is that stops that end bit falling out and makes it a lot easier for you when you're in there. So I recommend doing that. Okay, so we're in the cupboard. This is the awkward part. So I might sound a bit funny when I'm doing this, 
but this is what we need to do to do these bolts up. Lay down in the cupboard and I'm going to put one of these bolts in just to show you how it goes. So, I hope you guys can see that. I'm going to show you putting this one in here. So what we want to do, we pop our bolt in, hold it on the end, finger tight. Now you will get dust in your eyes here, so it's not a very pleasant job to do, but it does need doing. So yeah, we're just gonna do that bolt up finger tight. And then with a 10 mil spanner, you can get ratchet in ones, but I find them a bit awkward to get out sometimes. So I'll just use a normal one. We're just gonna do that bolt up. And there we have it guys that's how you go about fitting these in there things to remember don't forget to put your bit of tape on the end because that's going to make your life a lot easier take your time measure out don't forget to measure out for where your bolt holes go i know other people just put them on but it's a lot easier if you take that time just to measure and move that jig along because like you can see from there i only had to drill out for one of the holes the other two were exposed and i could get to them um don't over tighten straight away you know do do them up bit by bit as you go for all of the bolts and you shouldn't go far wrong now check out the other video i think it's going to be here for how to actually do the mason's mitre in there and don't forget that there's going to be the other videos i'm going to do videos on this whole project so there's going to be bit videos for the upstands how to fit the sink how to put the edging strips on everything you name it there's going to be videos for all of it so keep your eyes out for them they're going to be coming in the next weeks um but yeah i'm going to leave it there guys thanks for watching see you on the next one check out this video